It's really who you associate with. You want to associate with people that are better than you are. I mean, basically, you'll go in the direction of the people that you associate with. And if you want to emulate somebody, you better pick very carefully who you want to emulate. Imagine you are watching successful people and you're wondering how they get so much done in the same 24 hours that we all have. The 89-year-old Berkshire Hathaway CEO and chairman, Warren Buffett, who is currently the third richest person in the world, has shared information about that one common trait found in rich people. Let's dive deeper. Buffett asserts that the secret isn't really elusive. As the Oracle of Omaha once said, the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. This may seem paradoxical at first look, but when you think about it, Buffett's advice applies to all facets of life, including work, personal affairs, and investing. Often we are overextended by an unending stream of yeses, which amounts to an excessive amount of obligations. If you've been there, you're aware of the negative effects, which include elevated stress levels and a decline in the general standard of work and life and decision making. The bright side is there's a straightforward yet effective remedy available, learning to say no. While it's certainly not easy, the work is definitely beneficial. Imagine being able to reclaim control over your time and energy by gracefully dismissing some opportunities or requests. It's similar to organizing your calendar to make space for things that really count. Saying no is a calculated decision to weed out the unnecessary, not to close doors to every opportunity. Think of your obligations like a dish of food. You can only eat so much before becoming too full. You may make sure that you enjoy every mouthful of the food that is already on your plate by refusing further portions. Now let's apply this idea to the workplace. When you're overloaded with work, accepting everything that is thrown at you may be your automatic response. But consider what would happen if you choose to turn off assignments that don't fit with your priorities or areas of strength. You will not only do better work this way, but you will also make room for projects where your real expertise may show. Saying no has even greater power when it comes to making decisions. Envision a situation where you are presented with several options, all vying for your consideration. By refusing, you can cut out possibilities that, when you look more closely, don't really advance your objectives. It's a logical process for making decisions that makes room for the things that are actually important to you. A better work-life balance is cultivated by incorporating the art of saying no. It takes deliberate action to prioritize your well-being and establish limits. You make time for deep connections and self-care instead of giving in to the pressure of continuous affirmation. It's true that saying no takes practice to get down pat. It entails developing your capacity to evaluate opportunities and determine whether they are consistent with your overall goals. As you get better at this technique, you'll eventually notice that you have a full plate of projects that fulfill you and are in line with your long-term goals. We come across a plethora of alluring opportunities in the broad tapestry of life, all luring us in with the prospect of development and prosperity. However, it's important to understand that every commitment, whether it's an alluring investment, a new task at work, or an engaging pastime, requires a portion of our finite time. Imagine yourself in front of a large array of options, all fighting for your attention like stars in the night sky. It's simply to get carried away by the promise of possible profits. But as the year progresses, think about taking a different tack. Avoid the temptation to overextend oneself by pursuing too many opportunities. Rather, apply a critical eye that sorts through the numerous options and identifies the ones that are actually important. Envision yourself wandering a busy market, filled with stalls overflowing with goods. The secret is to pick the jewels that most closely align with your values and aspirations. By doing this, you're saying yes to the opportunities that really matter, rather than just turning down others. Rather than a disorganized shuffle, consider it a carefully chosen playlist. Like a well-curated playlist improves your listening pleasure, concentrating on a few key opportunities makes your journey more impactful. It's about directing your efforts to where they will have the biggest positive effects on your life and career. It is essentially a conscious process of guiding your ship across the wide ocean of options so that you make important course corrections. Allow intention to be your compass. As you navigate the sea of possibilities, enable the realization that each commitment is a trade-off to drive your decisions. By passing up the enticement of every gleaming possibility, you make place for the brilliance of those who are aligned with your deepest desires. Utilize the power of selectivity to carve a road that leads not only to success, but to fulfillment 
that is individually customized to your journey. Excessive labor hours, typically exceeding 80 per week, have become the standard in the quest of entrepreneurial and corporate success. The dominant culture elevates this unwavering loyalty to the level of a badge of honor. What is sometimes forgotten is the toll it has on personal and family life. Individuals are unknowingly neglecting their families and personal well-being as a result of the mentality of celebrating unrelenting effort. Ambitious pursuit of professional goals can result in conspicuous absence from the most important moments. The person who joyfully embraces an 80-hour work week may discover that they are foregoing vital moments of interaction with their loved ones as a result. Success appears to come at a cost, one that entails a trade-off between professional accomplishments and personal contentment. The obsessive pursuit of commercial objectives might tilt the scales, neglecting family life and personal connections. The fanatics of the 80-hour workweek may achieve professional success, while failing to recognize, possibly too late, the hole left in their personal life. A shift in viewpoint is critical in the larger context. Success does not have to be synonymous with burnout. It can coexist with a balanced approach. Achieving balance between job and personal life is a sign of a truly successful person, is the realization that there is a realm outside of the boardroom and entrepreneurial activities where family, friends, and personal well-being thrive. Choosing balance over burnout becomes the characteristic of individuals who recognize that success is measured not just in professional plaudits, but also in the depth of personal relationships. It's a recognition that a fulfilling life includes both professional accomplishments and cherished moments with loved ones. In a culture that often extols the hustle, the true achievement is found in striking that fine balance between ambition and the warmth of a well-nourished personal life. You know, superficial networking events? Those speed dating style events where business cards shuffle like confetti. But here's the thing, the wise ones, the true go-getters, don't get sucked into the pandemonium. They follow a different path. They devote their time to something more meaningful, something that goes beyond the obvious. Consider yourself in a room full of eager faces and the constant exchange of cards that appear to be more quantity than quality. It's a blur of names and titles, a race against the clock to make a good first impression. But here's the kicker. Successful people don't play that game. Instead, imagine a small group of people having actual talks and making meaningful connections. It's all about quality over quantity. Consider it similar to gardening. Instead of strewing seeds everywhere, they painstakingly plant and nurture a select handful, watering those bonds, allowing them to grow strong and durable. Why? Because successful people recognize the value of authenticity. They understand that enduring connections are not formed through a frenzy exchange of business cards. No, it's about investing time and work into knowing others and creating bonds that go beyond the surface. So next time you find yourself in the throes of a networking frenzy, keep this in mind. It's not about amassing a pile of business cards. It's about establishing a garden of meaningful relationships where each connection is a strong, growing plant that contributes to your success in ways that surface interactions never could. Quality over quantity is the winning technique, my friend. Trying to please others might lead to ignoring basic personal needs. In the pursuit of making everyone happy, one might unintentionally neglect their own well-being. Successful people recognize that their ability to contribute to others is inextricably related to their own sense of balance and well-being. It's not about being selfish, but about realizing that in order to be a lighthouse for others, you must first light your own way. So while kindness and attention are important, remember that your path to success includes taking care of yourself while also elevating people around you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching our content, then do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to comment your thoughts below.